Hey guys, welcome to an episode some of you are going to find interesting because it kind of gives you a behind the scenes look at what I do to get the guitars I build. Now, I've kind of hinted around lately that I get to a wall where I'm looking at a guitar thinking, I can't do the things I do to this guitar. I don't want to put matchbooks on the neck. I don't want to cover up the headstock. I don't want to drill holes in and put relic wood because this guitar is kind of at the top end of the guitars I work on. So say for example, I did an episode called um, Hector's, I got to grab something here, you know, I have to have this. I did an episode of Covenant's Corner called Hector's Airline. It's right up there right now and you'll see that guitar, short of a couple neck problems, was pristine, had the factory speed bump pickups. Um, and so I'm kind of looking at this going, I really can't do anything to this guitar to dress it out. So I'll just hang it on the wall and um, after a while those guitars are kind of forgotten about. And then when you start getting into the collector value of that stuff, um, for me to go what that guitar was worth, up to a low end Gibson is a is a jump of probably a thousand dollars and then I'm starting off with jump Gibson and uh, and so I'm sitting there wondering well what can I do with this am I gonna trash a Gibson now you know the Texas junk pile looks like a Gibson ES 175 I want to give you a link to that playlist up there because the way that came together was pretty interesting but I got that out of a shop um, and it was tore up from the floor up. Everything was missing off of it. Somebody had stripped it. Nobody knew what it was. I think it is a um, was a Japanese guitar. I've had people look at it and be almost fooled, but they look at something on the back where the binding is in the in the Florentine uh, cutaway, and then they spot something. I'll figure out what that is. But anyway, I want to kind of give you. An insider's look at first we need to understand what guitar shops are in business for they're there to make money they're not there to sell us a really old guitar and lose money on it now I understand a little bit about the process by how they get those guitars and what they need to do to feel good at the end of the day what the demand for those guitars is and what I can do to help them turn loose of what I want and get something in their hand that um, fulfills the purpose of why they're in business. And I'm going to give you insider's look at that. Okay, the guitar in this case showed up on Facebook uh, Marketplace. It This case was full of stickers. Um, it's a Roadrunner case. So, I'm, I mean, I bought one to put a Gretsch, Gretsch steel body in, and I think I paid $140 for a new one. So a case like this that closes uh, and is in okay shape, is worth I don't know 40 50 bucks at least the guitar that is inside um, was surprisingly good shape but both the case and the guitar were full of stickers um, when you see stickers on a case that's one thing when you see stickers on a guitar that's usually a warning sign and when we open this case up I'm going to show you what's in here and I'm going to show you what I can do with my limited Luthery skills, Lutherism, Luther, not Luther Dickinson, sorry Luther, I don't mean to insult you, uh, by bringing your name into my bankrupt guitar repair skills, but um, we'll take a close look at this. The idea here is to be, to cut right to the chase, which I never do. I am looking for this when I go into a guitar shop. Nobody else is looking for this. Um, what is this? I think it's a silver tone. It has a neck that's V'd. That tells us it's 40s. It doesn't have a very tall fingerboard. It tells you it's a student instrument. You can see that somebody repaired a crack in it right here. You can see that it's rusty. You can see that the tuners are tore up. I'm looking for this guitar. How many people do you think are looking for this guitar? Well, if you're watching my channel, you're probably looking for it. Um, if you're in the LA area, you get a lot of these things showing up. You want to remember that 
the difference between the climate around Long Beach uh, and Ventura is very different than up here where I live in the high desert. So, um, you can get things that are warped, you can get things that have been in the, in the closet, strung up for a really long time, neck, bows, all this kind of thing. But I'm looking for this kind of guitar. Now, why would a guitar shop even have this guitar? For a guitar shop to work on this and put any time into it, even do the most simple stuff, the hourly fees are such that you'll get into something several hundred dollars worth of labor and maybe you got old parts laying around or something like that but you're going to put a lot of money in then you're going to hang it on the wall does your average customer walking in the door see this guitar and go oh i have to have it no the idea is is that people are buying guitars they decide i'm going to learn how to play a guitar so they walk in they're looking for something that if they don't pick it up they want to walk out with an amp some kind of case and a guitar $200, $250. So they get their $250 out, they give it to the person, they still can't play guitar. Face it, anybody's going to buy an amp and a, and a guitar uh, for $250 bucks, so the case is probably a beginner. They're going to need lessons. So if you got somebody that doesn't give lessons, you run a space out in your shop. Um, you've got people that, are prog that will progress, and at some point they'll want a guitar, uh, that's a little bit better than the one they have if they get better. Or they're going to come back in about two months. Their parents are going to be with them and go, what do you give me for that guitar? Because, um, you know, it's uh, they haven't touched it in weeks or months or even years. So every once in a while, you'll get somebody that sees that guitar that you have on the wall there. And they have to have it, but they don't have the money. So they want to trade some stuff. So they go digging around, and what do you know? There's Grandpa's garage, guitar that they got out of the attic or garage, and they want to trade it in. Well, on a several hundred dollar guitar, you start getting up five, six, seven hundred dollars. This guitar takes care of the tax. So the guy in the guitar shop says, "Hey, I don't know. I'll give you fifty bucks for this thing. Sixty bucks in store credit. Here I come." What do you think I'm going to pay for this guitar? Because I'm going to put a couple hundred bucks into it. I'm going to bolt the neck up. I'm going to do uh, the kind of stuff I did with the California junk pile. I'll give you that playlist or, or, or an episode on it where you see somebody playing it. So you can see if you've never seen my a channel before, you can see what I do to, to guitars like this. I dress them up. Blues players see them. They go, oh, wow, I can play junk. But again, the demand for these... Going into a shop, there's only a few people. And there's a couple shops that will take this kind of stuff because they know when I walk in the door, I'm going to want it. Now, ideally, rather than giving somebody a very loud truck to mess up my episode, instead of them getting taking 50 bucks off of something that's been marked up that they gave somebody 300 for, and now they're selling for 450 they would really like it if they can take some money out of my pocket and have something they, they can sell with minimal effort. And we're going to look at one of those guitars because I do this every once in a while. I'll run across a guitar. This one is a perfect example because the things I can do to this guitar are going to make it automatically sellable in that shop. So when I walk in and I say, hey, what do you got? And they say, oh, I got this. And I say, I'm not going to give you any more than X for this, but I've got this. I've got about this much into it. I think you can sell it for this much. And I'll give you some cash. So you got a guitar you can sell with no work, no time on the bench, no investment. And I got something that I want and everybody's happy. Let the guy in the guitar shop make money. You know... When it comes to dealing with people about guitars, I heard a story one time. I think I'm going to burn my last card up here. I want you to see this. This is an interview with Fred Walecki, um, luthier, impressive, more impressive uh, than his skills with guitars and sound equipment is his moral standard. And he tells a story, again, that eye up there when you move your mouse up there. You can abandon my episode to watch this one. It's okay because he's a good dude. 
Anyway, he tells a story about when he grew up in a music shop. Um, I think his mother was doing violin lessons. Um, they were selling different things, uh, renting out student instruments, stringed instruments, um, violins, cellos, violas, things like that. Um, so you you would sell and rent stuff, give lessons there, and then you bring some guitars in. So Fred tells a story when he was young. This guy comes in and buys a set of strings. Fred sold him a great set of strings. The guy left the shop and Fred's father said, you know, Fred, you sold that guy the best strings we have in the shop. And, and he said, you know, Fred, I heard the guy tell you that he rode the bus here. And I heard him, I heard you ask him what kind of guitar he had, and he had a very economical guitar. So you sold him expensive strings for a guitar that should have been a concert guitar. And this gentleman rode the bus. He doesn't even have a card to get here. And um, I want you to go make it right with him. Anyway, see that story up there, Circle of Night. Watch that story. Um, you want to remember, guys, the little music stores, the ones that had a few records, that were knowledgeable about the records, the history of things. You could walk in and say, hey, I got this amount of money. I want to end up with this and this. And these guys were honest. They wanted to make a living, but they recognized you as a customer. You might come back once a year and buy a record. You might come back and get really good really quick and buy better guitars and stuff. But these guys were in business to make money. And now most of them are gone because I don't want to mention any of the big corporate names, but now they're cannibalizing themselves. They had big storefronts. They had every kind of guitar. And now those guys are going out of business and are being taken over by mail order stuff. And I'm not sure the quality of the instrument is good. And you certainly don't walk into the shop and talk to somebody that says, you know, I think for the price you'll be happy with it. Watch out for this and this and this. You had knowledge of the product, whether it was a guitar or what kind of music you were looking at. And those days, unfortunately, are gone. So it's been a really long opening, but I want to go to the bench and I want to show you what's in here, uh, what it is, how quickly I can turn it around and make it useful uh, to one of, the, one of the guitar shops I deal with, because they know I'm not going to bring them something that's masked. Uh, that has, you know, damage and stuff that I'm not going to tell them about. So they know I'll tell them right away, hey, here's what's going on. But let's have a look at this and let's see how quickly we can turn it around and um, make it into something I can trade off for what will ultimately become one of my junk piles. Maybe the Mississippi mudslide. Who knows? Let's go to the bank. All right, here we go. Let's start off with this case. It has a Roadrunner uh, tag on it. It had stickers all over it. It had um, pins, hat pins on here that had the pins stripped off. It had coins glued on here. There were stickers everywhere. I took a bunch of them off because they had corporate logos and I'm not gonna advertise it for anybody, but you can see wherever it looks to be new, um, there was a sticker there. This whole thing was full of stickers. Now, interestingly enough, there were football stickers, but there was a lot of cowboy stuff. So you got, um, um, tokens here out of Nashville. You got stuff around Ventura. There was a lot of American flag motif in, on the bottom as well. And I, knowing where I got this, I think this might have belonged to somebody that was in the military. Along with this um, guitar came some books and lesson manuals, and we'll look at that. But anyway, let's pop this puppy open. Okay, it is an Epiphone acoustic flat top. Now, let's take a look here in case some of y'all can recognize this stuff. It's a six string. The neck here, or the fingerboard, has some telltale marks here. People wonder like, what is this here? Why is that there? Why does it look different? Well, you can tell when people don't trim their fingernails, it shows up on the fingerboard. So, um, but the first thing I noticed about this thing is, again, I took them off because I don't want to do brand uh, recognition for people and getting all that kind of stuff. Hey, you're using our logo in your video, but there were stickers literally all over the top of this thing. 
and um, there's still some on the back. Now people use these paper stickers that come with guitar strings, but you can see here, there's a paper sticker, there was a big sticker here, one here, one here, and one here. This one concerned me a little bit, but I will tell you what, it is my experience that when people put stickers on a guitar, when you see a guitar with stickers on it, nine times out of 10, there is a hole, a crack, or a big damage somewhere. Now, as far as damage, it's obvious um, right here. Somebody played this thing a lot, and so they're doing this and, and all this. So this is worn right here. The action on this thing is okay. Um, and once I get the strings off of it, we're going to have to take the strings off of it for a reason. But if I forget, I want to talk to you about this bridge right here. And we take the strings off. If the action was high on this thing, um, I got to look and see, is the neck okay? Yeah, the neck's okay. But if the action is high on this, when I'm buying one of these, I got to look at, does this come off? Is it bolted? Is it glued under here? Is there a way to clamp it? I'm going to shake it. Are there any braces loose? Is any, everything okay? I'm going to put my light and my mirror in there. But if I have to take this action down, I'm going to want to mark this bridge right here with a pencil because it fits in a slot right here, right there. There's a slot that this fits in. If I take and mark this with a pencil, once the strings are off, if I have to file this down a little bit to lower the action, or even file this down a little bit, um, I want to make sure that I know where I started and I've got a reference line because when I'm filing this bridge, if it doesn't get filed straight, then my action is going to start doing this kind of stuff and my intonation of my strings will be a mess. Not marking this off and filing it a little bit and getting it out of whack is going to cost you a lot of problem later, or cause you a lot of problems later. Okay, so where was the hole? I knew it was somewhere. Guess what? It was right here. You see that? I don't know whether somebody was going to try to put a pickup on this thing and that's where the jack was going to go. These things are some someone would put a piezo in or something like that, but that is where the hole was. I don't see any other damage. I don't see any other cracks. So, um, I told you I'm going to have to take the strings off. Here's why. Somebody took the original tuners off. What's the best way to do this? Here we go. They put a set of Grover tuners on it. See? Those are great tuners. The guy at the guitar shop, when I turn this in, is going to like these tuners. Can we see where we're at here? Let me see. But the problem is, is one of them is not straight, and that's going to bother me. Plus, if we look close here, let me hold this up. The original tuner holes are still here. You see them? There's one right there. There's one right there. So what I can do is I can take my toothpick from my bacon flavored toothpick box. I can put a little glue on a toothpick. I can put it there and pop it off. But I'm going to take these tuners off. In order to do that, I'm going to unstring the instrument. And if you look down in there, there's an American flag sticker where my serial number should be. I don't think this is a new guitar. I think this is an older guitar. And so I'm going to take the strings off. I'm going to lemon oil the fingerboard and clean that up. I'm going to look at everything and make sure that there's no high frets and nothing is sticking out or anything. It feels pretty good. And then I'm going to take a couple of products that I use. We're going to get rid of the sticker residue. We're going to tighten this strap button up a little bit and make sure that that isn't hiding a screw that's that long that has the neck bolted on. I don't think so. There's a hex nut inside at the end of the fingerboard right down in there so I think everything's okay but we're going to try and find out how old this thing is and we're going to clean it up and basically I really don't have to put anything more than an hour into this and um, have it be okay. The last thing that I have to worry about is the case down at the end right here. When you close it, it doesn't close right so I can take a rubber mallet 
and I can go around and with no guitar in it, tap it in or clamp it this way. I can put a post on the bench and clamp it or use a motorcycle strap and pull it in and get it to sit and get all these stickers off of here and make this case presentable. What I am after is to be able to take the case and the guitar in and have somebody say, I think I can put this in a student's hand or somebody just wants to play guitar by a campfire. I give them a good deal on it and then get one of these junk piles out of my hair that I've been sitting and waiting for Ken or one of his cronies to come in. So watch me a little bit here. I'll show you a couple of tricks. They're easy and we'll get this thing out of the way before we close out the episode. Okay guys, before we get going, you want to remember we got these velvet bags, could be Crown Royal bags, could be anything. And I've got beans in them. You want to have those around. You have, want to have a couple pieces of wood around. My trusty wood here. And you want to have a couple of these soft cotton rags around that are clean so you can pad up things. You, you, you want a neck stand of some type. It's, I like this one. It's made out of cork. It won't hurt anything. It's got di several different ways that you can adjust it for whatever you want to do with the car guitar. But when you put your guitar up here, you want to make sure that it's stable and padded and that it doesn't hit the camera like that. So I've got these here and what do you know? There we go. So we're going to start off by pulling the tuners and um, I'm going to slack these off a little bit uh, before I use this gadget and believe you me this thing is worth its weight in gold. Okay guys, let's start off with a couple of little tricks and tools I want to show you. First I want to show you this wrench. Uh, smooth here, teeth here, reversible. So, rather than getting a crescent wrench out like this and or nut driver and messing everything up, all I got to do is take this, set it there, and loosen those up like that, you see. This is also great if you're trying to tighten up the nut on a potentiometer without pulling the volume control off. Now if I want to put them back on, I just put this one up at the top, lefty loosey righty tighty. That's very handy. I also want to put everything back where it goes. So I've taken a piece of this binding tape and I've written numbers on it. So I put that there. One Two. Wow, this is like going to first grade again, isn't it, guys? Happy I could give you a refresher. Four. Five. And six. There's six strings. So, when I take these off, they're going to go back where I got them. Now, I have a magnet and I have my double mint twins container, remember? So I put that in there, and as I start popping these off, I just put this here like that. I'll loosen those off. Well, I got this here. I can tell that somebody used Gorilla Glue on that nut right there. I don't like that at all. So I can take this, tape it off like so, where it's not going to get to the fingerboard, and file it. How am I going to file it? Well, I've got a set of nut files here. These are very expensive, but they're, they're for the right size. There's 056, a 56 string down to a 10 and 13. Good stuff. Again, this is good stuff. And now, something that's really expensive, but you'll hate life once you get one and wonder what you did without it. We have this angled file that's embedded with diamond bits. Now these come in different angles, but what this is for is, it's for working on your frets and things with the strings on, so it'll go underneath here. It's also great if you put this here like so and get it closer, you're not gonna tear up the fingerboard, and I can go to work on 
that Gorilla Glue right there. I certainly don't want to be popping it off with a knife or anything. If these nuts are set right, or if there's not a back angle to them, sometimes the nuts come up and the strings are right there and you get some buzz. So you can just take your nut files, make an angle like this, and then get them to come down here where the string is not hitting right here and, and hanging up there. But these are handy tools. Now something else I want to show you. I got this from my friend Rob at Guitar 48. If I pa if I put uh, this here, the knot needs to be filed where the strings start off and ride up here, just right above the fret. So if I put this here and file the knot down to where the string goes dead, the minute I put this under here, it's at the right level. Um, an old trick I learned because if you're, you're your strings are too high up here by the nut. It doesn't work out. Again, I'm showing you that there's grooves right here. Somebody has played this guitar. You can feel it. And when I dress this out, when I'm all done, I'm going to use lemon oil on the fretboard. I'm just going to take a rag and put lemon oil on the fretboard. And um, maybe I can show you what it does right here right away. So... I'm just going to put a little bit on a rag like this, make sure it doesn't spill all over. And oh my gosh, look at that. It comes right too. Anyway, one more time. Can't beat lemon oil for the fretboard. Okay, another little trick here. I've taken a piece of cardboard. You've seen this trick before. I put screws in to paint them chick flick teal. You can tell any guitar I've worked on because if the screws on the back of this are chick flick teal, I've been there. So, anyway, I told you, I want these to go back where they were. I've got them numbered, one through six, and I've got this piece of cardboard with these holes in here. So when I take the escutcheons off of the tuners, I'm going to put them with their respective washer right there. That way, everything goes back to where it is. Now, I want you to notice here that there are holes here, a triangle pattern hole for what appears to be a truss rod cover. Okay. By the way, here's my little pattern for my truss rod covers uh, that I make out of metal from some abandoned place in Los Angeles. Anyway, put that right there so I don't lose it. Anyway, there is a hole there there and there there is no truss rod that you can adjust from here the adjustment is actually back on this side so th that may help me identify how old this guitar is but while i'm here i am going to show you that once i get the tuners off i'm going to use this product howard feed and wax i'm going to use a different rag i don't want to pollute stuff. I have different rags for all these different things. But I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to let that soak in while I'm working the other side. And you can tell up here that there's something up here that's scratched or we'll find out what that is. But we're going to let that soak in so that'll clean up nice. You can tell where I hit the fingerboard over here. You see the difference between where I used the lemon oil and where I haven't used it yet. This stuff takes off grime and everything else really well. But now let's turn this over if I get everything out of the way here. Oh, before I do that, I do want to show you something here. Sorry, I'm bouncing all over the map. But let's zoom in on that bridge. Oh, the other zoom in. There we go. Okay. This thing does not have a floating bridge. You can tell that. Let's say the action was a tad high. Uh, I certainly don't want to put new frets in this thing to get, you know, uh, the frets higher to the strings. So what I might do is, um, I'm going to grab a pencil here. This bridge fits down in a slot here. Now let's say that I wanted to file this down just a tad to get a portion of a millimeter action down this way. Before I do anything, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark right there where that bridge is sitting. Because if I do go to file this and I don't get this 
flat where it's sitting down and the thing starts sitting like this or like this. My intonation is all going to be screwed up and I don't want that. Oh, what I did notice is the pegs that hold the string ends in are, let me see if I can pull one out here and show you without messing everything up. Yeah, they're abalone. Somebody put a little bit of money into this thing to dress it up with tuners, with the Grover tuners and everything. But also while I'm here, that American flag down in there is where the serial number should be. So I'm going to pop that off of there. For all I know, somebody put a Epiphone neck on a junkie guitar. I don't know. So let's see what happens here. Nope, there's nothing underneath there. I'll take a light to it, but all the braces appear to be intact. Anyway, a little hint there. Always mark your bridge. Okay, I'm going to pull the tuners off now. This is the one that's crooked, and I have um, the old holes here. So, I'm going to use a drill to pop these off. First thing, I'm going to make sure the drill is going the right way because I don't want to tighten these and crack everything. I want to make sure that my clutch is set where it, it doesn't strip anything out. So I'm going to click these on and I'm going to take my time here and notice I've got a bit that's long so I don't have to be on top of these tuners scratching them up and spinning the drill head on them. Now I'm going to take the tuner here because it's on this side. I'm going to put it in the number one position on this hole because I'm going to paint these, okay? So, all right, there we go. Just like this, I can take a pencil and do up so I don't forget. This is up. The headstock is like this, and there is the Gibson lawsuit headstock. This thing makes me wonder how old this is, really. So we put that off to the side. Now we just pop these tuners out. We throw them in here. Doesn't matter what order they're in because they're marked, remember? So we do that. Okay, now I'm going to want to take this first one and go back because it was off a little bit. And I'm going to turn it, okay? And then I'm going to mark where that... Oop, it tried to spin on me. I'm going to mark where that one goes so I know where to put the new hole, okay? It's very close to the old hole, so I'm going to have a problem with this trying to strip out, but I got all these holes in here. This one, there we go. It's a little bit stubborn. So I got all these holes in here. I want to show you a little trick. We're going to take our bacon-flavored toothpicks. We're going to take a little bit of glue that our first grade teacher told us about. We're going to have a bit of paper towel around us. And we're going to pop this here. And we're just going to put a drop there where each of these old tuners were. And of course, I'm going to do this one down here because it was crooked. So we're just going to go along like this like so. Then we're going to take our toothpick. We're going to snap off the very end of it, not too much, to flatten it out a little bit. And then we're just going to put that in there like that and pop it. And I'm going to wipe this off a little bit like this. And you'll notice that we have a tad of this stuff sticking up. I'm going to take some of my binding tape here and I am going to put it right there and the reason I'm putting it right there is because I know that the tape is just a tad above where my toothpicks are like this see and I want to make sure the glue is dry before I start doing this but I want to go Everywhere where I have a toothpick sticking up, just right next to it. And then 
I can take my fancy diamond file and just come along and stay on the tape and do that. So I just stay, make sure most of the file is on the tape and as long as it's writing the tape it won't let me get down into that wood. This is very handy. So then once I've got everything filed and all my uh, stuff ready with the glue on, I can take my furniture marker and go to each one of these and put a dot on each one of the toothpicks and hide it. So that's pretty handy. So once that's done, we're going to get all this tape off of here. We're going to let everything dry before the next step. Okay, so now I'm going to take my feed and wax product again. Everything on the back of the headstock where the tuners are going to go is done. You've got some wear and tear here. So I'm just going to glob some of this on here and let it soak in. And then once that happens, while I'm doing something else here, I can just put this on the neck and let this, I don't want to forget the sides here. Anyway, that's going to loosen up any gunk and whatever, and we're going to get everything off there. Make sure our toothpicks are all cool. I filed those down again with my file here, but we'll let that sit. Let's give our attention to the next thing, which is the strap button right on the neck. I want to take this off, and I want to see how long it is, because if you look here, there was a strap button right there. So there's a chick flick teal pointer. You can see right there. I don't know if you can see it. How's the light? But this pencil goes in here. So somebody was playing that and I don't know why this is here and I don't know why it's loose. I'm hoping that somebody didn't bolt the neck on and try to hide it like that. So again we're going to set our clutch really low. We're going to come in here. We're going to try and pull this off and see what happens here. Okay, it's not a big screw. It's a typical standard size for a strap button. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. I am going to not want to waller that out, so I'm going to put a tad bit of glue on there. Not too much, just enough to make it stick. And we are going to take our rag that's got our weed and feed on it and use the opportunity while we're right there to get that gunk out of there. And then we'll pop this back in. Now, you know, of course, I'm going to put a tad bit of Chick Flick Teal on the end of that screw so we know we've checked it out. Put the drill the other way, set the clutch right so it doesn't dig in and force anything in there. And crack there we go. Much better. Um, now while we're here, we're going to start working on these stickers. You see these stickers here? They're paper-based stickers. Um, you see this? No, you don't. You really don't want to use one of these. What you, end up, what you want to use is you want to use a plastic scraper that bends real easy or even breaks before anything happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to coat the back of this with an ample supply of our feed and wax. We're just going to goop that on there and that's going to want to start eating through this stuff. The binding on this thing is yellowy. I think this thing is older and I'm not seeing a tag. I'm just wondering if somebody this isn't some guitar that somebody tried to play it off to be something it's not. Anyway, we're going to leave this sit on here and it will start eating away at that paper after a bit. It's also going to hydrate everything. I love this stuff. I use it on all my old arch tops once they're done. But yeah, it's going to take a little bit. This stuff has been put on here. Don't start taking a razor blade or something because this guitar here is in really good shape if you take a look at it. And um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this hole in. I'll put a, put a piece of rod in there. And again, we'll chick flick teal it. If you see a guitar that has chick flick teal on it in a shop, 
you want to buy it and then 300 years later you want to go to the antiques road show and go yeah that's right this is a Paul Miro junk pile guitar that's right all right so we're just gonna let that sit and um, soak in and it will do its job we're gonna do the sides the same way um, the top had stickers over here um, these battle scars from being played I think we're gonna leave that alone there were some stickers up here towards the bridge that kind of worried me um, we've got a hole to fix remember this one right here we're going to patch that up again we're going to put a, a chick flick teal plug in it but right now we're just waiting for everything to soak in so we can get rid of the sticker residue um, we may as well there you go I don't want to be shy about this this stuff is kind of stinky um, you don't want to be leaving a guitar like this sit in a hot shed overnight and go through hot and cold or whatever. But this stuff will kind of bug some people. I don't want to be shy about getting it on the bridge. This stuff will work good for, for that as well. And uh, I don't have to do anything with the nut. You notice that when I drag this stuff across the nut, it cleans it up nice. But um, I want to take and get my other rag now and put well I've got this up and while we're waiting for everything to soak in overnight we're going to go ahead and pop that off and and uh, lemon oil the fretboard There we go. We're going to let everything soak in and, de and hydrate, not dehydrate. I'm starting to dehydrate. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Okay. This has been soaking all night with this rag full of feeding wax there. And you'll see that it's going to pop right off. Now, I can just push it off and peel it off and work it off really slow. See? Like so. I'll give you a hint when you're peeling stickers if you're trying to pull it from way up here the tension's not right so pull it straight back as much as you can like that and and now see everything wants to peel off but I had all of these stickers either come off the case or the guitar and um, oh yeah George wanted me to keep this one, so I will. You happy? I am too. I won't tell a lie. All right, there we go. Good as new. And um, this stuff worked great on the top. On the sides, just as a, as a clean up. And you rub this stuff. You get a nice sheen out of this. And this... This bridge got hydrated up again. Everything's clean. Won't have to worry about this cracking. But yeah, stuff's good stuff. Got a couple of holes to fill, a little crack to push some hide glue into and put some tuners on. Okay, so we've got uh, this hole right here where a strap button used to be. I don't know whether this thing was rigged up left-handed or what at one point, but we got this little flapper tape on here. This is the same size hole. I just want to get it nice and smooth so I can put my plug in here. And then we'll just cut it off. So... I've bottomed it out there and so I'm going to make a mark right there and then when I cut it I'm going to cut it just a tad short and then when I put my chick flick teal paint on the end of it it will be flush right there and then we won't have to sand it we'll get all that done before we pop it in there put a little glue in there and boom pop it right in 
Okay, I want to show you something here. We've got a little ding right here. It's actually indented just a tad, but it's got a rough edge. I don't want to mess with that too much, but we want to stabilize it. And also you can see that there's a hole right there. So we're going to work on these two things first now. And uh, I am going to tape off everywhere around the crack right there, that little ding. Um, so I can sand it. We're not going to do too much to it, except fill it up with hide glue. Now, remember the hide glue, if you heat the area up, it'll, it'll work itself loose. But I got that there. And I got this glue bot. Remember these? You squeeze right here, and you see how it comes right up there. And then as soon as you let go, it goes back down. Anyway, um, yeah, this thing that hangs here is... Like so, I think I'll give you a link to these things uh, down below. Anyway, I'm just going to put some on there and like so. Now, if you just let it sit there, it's not really going to do anything. So, remember me telling you about these suction cups. So, the thing about these suction cups, they need to be a little bit wet. You didn't see how I did that. That glue's starting to run a little bit there, so I'm going to dab it. Now, I want to push this down into that crack. So if I push down and pull up, the same motion that forces the glue is going to suck it back out. So I don't want that. So what you do is you start at the edge, and you push down and go all the way through. And you do that a couple times. And that glue will get pushed down in there and some of it since this crack is or this divots just a tad um, sticking up it will kind of fill it a little bit and it's transparent it's kind of a little brown color so we'll put a little bit there like that and again we'll start way out here push down and take that leading edge over to here again not up and down so we're going to make sure nothing's around there. We're going to let that dry. These suction cups are cool. Get some. Okay, while our hide glue is drying, we've got this little hole here. I'm not sure how that happened. It almost is too round to be an accident. It almost looks like somebody was trying to put a pickup inside of this or a, a jack there, which would have been for a piezo or something. Anyway, we're not going to have that. And that's kind of in an odd place anyway, if we were. So we took some of this mahogany dowel. It fits there just like so. It's standard size. We took our flush cut saw. you got to have one of these and cut a little piece off. And now we've got it along with the tuner screws, the plug to patch the hole that was at the neck. And now this... We'll go right here once we mark off our repairs with Chick Flick Teal. Okay, we've got our hide glues dry there. We're going to take a little bit of water and put it there. I've got this 1500 grit sandpaper. And because we masked this off, it will never get down to the guitar body. It will just... that thin piece of binding tape there will protect everything and as long as we keep the edges of the sandpaper on the binding tape you'll be fine now if you start doing this that's a little bit different story but you can basically keep this here like this and circle it around and add a little moisture here and there as you need to and it will be fine. There we go. And then once we're done, we wipe this down again with the feed and wax. And we'll be good to go. Okay, I want to show you another little trick here. When you put a, put a wood plug in the side of the guitar, the wood is kind of thin. You've got your glue there. And inevitably, if you push down on this, it's going to push right through. So what you want to do is take a razor blade or something that can span across there. And then when you push down what will happen is it'll flatten out even with what you're working on. You see that? 
Okay, we're back on the tuners. Um, you remember we had that one tuner, this bottom one, that was a little bit of crooked, and we used our, our toothpick and uh, furniture stain pens to fix all that. Anyway, we've got everything filled up with new wood to go to here, and we're going to drill a little hole there. There we go. Of course, we can't put these tuners back on without the chick flick teal screws, right? Of course not. All right, you always want to set that clutch where it will spin out, and then we're going to turn these in by hand finally. And then we'll put, flip it over and put the escutcheons on the other side. Don't want to forget our little plug here for that errant hole. There we go. Perfect. You want to remember we had everything marked. Remember this one, two, three, four, five, six. And those will just go on like there. And remember this handy tool. All right, there we go. We're on the last one. Perfect. Yeah, and we don't want to forget the truss rod cover that never was. We'll just pop those in there. Remember, anytime we use toothpicks, we're going to put tape down there and snap that off and turn it. Snap that off and turn it and then snap that off and turn it once that dries we're going to take our fancy diamond file again stay on the tape and you'll never scratch that up handy handy yeah this is not for your fingernails your fingernails are not worth a hundred dollars that might be what you pay to get them done once but it's not worth my file sorry <clears throat> play guitar you know that but I am really really happy with the way this one turned out it cleaned up really nice once the stickers came off these little areas that weren't that were had those little nicks and holes and things like that weren't really that bad uh, there was no bolt or screw holding the neck on all the braces are good or whatever but anyway this is something that somebody can go into a guitar shop buy for their first guitar or gra grab it up for the cabin to play around the campfire or something like that and be okay with it. So, um, so give me a like. If you don't like it, well, give me a like anyway. I mean, you lie about everything else, right? Why not me? So, uh, subscribe if you haven't. We'll kind of keep track of what happens to this and uh, I will see you next time. That is supposed to be, you know, the song Cold Motor by Bob Log. Yeah, a link to it right up there right about now. See you next time.